Hey, what's going on YouTube? I'm Dark Jack, and in this video, I go 42 and 2 on the map drone, playing with a bunch of my friends, and we dominate a group of Christmas noobs, because this is an older video. But I don't want to talk about the gameplay itself. What I want to ask you guys is, do you guys think there's a correlation between violent video games and real life violence? Do you think that violent video games make people want to hurt others? So post in the comment section below what you think about the relationship between violent video games and real life violence. Because many people believe that violent video games cause people to act violently, to want to hurt other people. So in the wake of recent shootings, like at Newtown and, at, and in Norway and in Colorado, that violent video games make people want to act violently. And what these people are doing is they are trying to find scapegoats for violence. And many people have blamed, blamed violent video games for school violence. And, for example, the one of the vice president of the NRA, when he was speaking about the most recent shooting in Newtown, he brought up five pretty obscure video video games that are violent, and he blamed them for the shooting shootings in Newtown. So people are trying to find a scapegoat for acts of violence, and one of the scapegoats that they bring up is violent media, violent movies and violent video games, and they'll blame gun lobbies as well. They'll blame the gun instead of blaming the person who did the shootings. And the reason why people do this is because they can't get to the killer, so they have to vent their frustration out on something else. Because the Newtown shooter killed himself, they can't get to him, they can't blame him for the shooting, so they blame other things. They'll blame the media, they'll blame, blame gun lobbies and everything else, rather than po pointing the finger at the killer, because they can't get to him. They can't do anything to him, but they can throw away Call of Duty. They can burn violent media, media and... R-rated movies, they, they can actually do something to those things, but, but they can't get to the killer himself. So they find scapegoats to blame violence rather than the person. And there is no conclusive evidence that video games cause people to be violent. People will say that video games and media make people violent, but there is no proof of that at all. Actually, sociologists, and I've studied this a bit in college, sociologists have not be able, been able to find any link between violent video games or violent movies and people acting out violently. Because most people can distinguish between fantasy and reality. They can make a distinction between real life violence and violence in a game or violence in a movie. And those things do not cause them to be violent. And it's no surprise that many people who are school shooters have played Call of Duty because Call of Duty is the most played game in the world because of its fast paced addicting nature. And I like the quote that only using me blade, he's a Call of Duty commentator once used, he said that Call of Duty does not make people violent. Tactics people use in Black Ops make people violent. Because in Call of Duty, many people will use cheap tactics in the game that will make people angry and frustrated. And that could make people violent and want to throw their controller. So because this is a video game, this does not actually teach people how to use guns. You can't learn how to use a gun from watching a movie or by playing a video game because each gun is different. It doesn't teach you how to unlock the safety mechanism or how to reload, or it doesn't teach you about the kinds of rounds that guns use. Because each gun is different. In order to use a gun, it takes time and training to learn how to use it. And I've used guns before in real life, and I've also played a lot of first-person shooter video games. And I know that if I just played the video game, I wouldn't have known how to use it accurately in real life. Because in real life, you have to know how to reload, you have to know how to turn the safety off, you have to know how to line the crosshairs up, with a target. And so learning how to use a gun takes time and practice to know how to use it effectively. And you can't know that just by watching a movie or playing a game. There's a difference between reality and fantasy. That people just some people that blame video games cannot take into effect. But I think games should be rated violent video games like Call of Duty should be rated M for mature. And little kids should not play them because young children have a hard hard time distinguishing between fantasy and reality. And so if they play a violent game they could have nightmares, and it could affect them. They could have a hard time studying at school because they're preoccupied thinking about this violent game. And it's the same for horror movies. Children should not watch horror movies because it could give them nightmares, because it could cause them to be scared and upset, because they have a difficult time distinguishing between reality and fantasy. And it's not until children become later, until their early teenage years, that they have a firm grasp and they get, they're able to distinguish clearly between fantasy and reality. And it's this lack of being able to distinguish between fantasy and reality that 
violent movies should be rated R and violent video games should be rated M for mature. And so as a Call of Duty player, it's to my advantage that children do play the game because little kids usually are fodder for uh, good game plays and it's easy to do well against bad players who are little kids. Like in this gameplay, I'm playing against a bunch of Christmas noobs and many of them are not very good. But little children should not play these games because they have a hard time distinguishing between fantasy and reality. And Call of Duty games can also be very addictive as well. So young children should not play them because it could distract them. They could be thinking about Call of Duty rather than thinking about their schoolwork. And so for these reasons, little kids should not play these games. But just because little kids should not play, should not play these games does not mean that they cause people to be, to be violent. And the fact that so many people play Call of Duty means that if it did cause people to be violent, we would see a lot more school shootings than we do now. So the problem is with the person who is pulling the trigger, not with the gun or not with the video game, because guns guns do not kill people, it's people that kill people, and they only use guns as an instrument. So trying to blame video games or trying to blame gun lobbies for violent crimes is it's missing a point. The, the point is that the people who commit these crimes are evil people, and the only way to stop people like this is to have multiple armed gar guards in every place where people meet in public. That's the only way to stop these people, is by having armed guards guards who can take down an active shooter. And so the fact of the matter is we just live in an evil world with evil people in it. And so trying to blame guns or trying to blame, blame video games or violent media for people who are evil who want to kill others just doesn't work. It's just making the problem worse because the only solution to this problem is just to have two people in every area, in every school, with guns to stop an active shooter. That's really the only way you can stop this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary, and I'll see you later.